morality, and style. A writer will find the more precisely, conscientiously, appropriately he expresses himself, the more obscure the literary result is thought, whereas a loose and irresponsible formulation is at once rewarded with certain understanding. It avails nothing aesthetically to avoid all technical expressions, all allusions to spheres of culture that no longer exist. Rigor and purity in assembling words, however simple the result, create a vacuum. Shoddiness that drifts with the flow of familiar speech is taken as a sign of relevance and contact. People know what they want because they know what other people want. Regard for the object rather than for communication is suspect in any expression. Anything specific, not taken from pre-existent patterns, appears inconsiderate, a symptom of eccentricity, almost of confusion. The logic of the day, which makes so much of its clarity, has naively adopted this perverted notion of everyday speech. Vague expression permits the hearer to imagine whatever suits him and what he already thinks in any case. Rigorous formulation demands unequivocal comprehension, conceptual effort, to which people are deliberately disencouraged and imposes on them in advance of any, co any content a suspension of all received opinions and thus an isolation that they violently resist. Only what they do not f need first to understand they consider understandable. Only the word coined by commerce and really alienated touches them as familiar. Few things contribute so much to the demoralization of intellectuals. Those who would escape it must recognize the advocates of communicability, communicability as traitors to what they communicate.